Ah, now it's working. <laughs> Hello, friends. Oh, let me turn this camera around. Hello. I and my wife, Nancy. Say hi, Nancy. <laughs> Uh, enjoyed a drive up much of the east coast of the United States yesterday, and we are in the Hudson River Valley of New York State in a little town called Beacon in a facility called the Roundhouse. We're here for the reception of Helen and Dan, and uh, I have just barely gotten started on a 24 by 36 inch painting. I need to have uh, much of the architecture in place. I know that my sound is not very good. I uh, just want to let you know I'm working on it. Uh, I have blitzed through three different technologies already. Each one has failed. I'm not sure it might be my phone that is failing with external microphones of various sorts, uh, but I'm not unaware of the bad quality of my sound. So sorry about that. Uh, stay tuned, it will get better as the, as the weeks unfold. Quite, quite irritating uh, to spend good money and then have so you can talk louder. Fail. I don't feel like I can talk louder. I can already feel it. Okay. <clears throat> There's the dishes chattering over here. And... show you for a second. Nancy said, am I in the am I in there? Yeah. So I'm doing this old trick of uh, these long brushes in particular are very good. I'm doing this old trick of holding my brushes up to get angles. Right. Right? That trick is especially good for those of you who don't really get quote unquote you don't get linear perspective. If you don't get linear perspective then you need to learn to do some other tricks. And this is certainly one of the tricks that you should know. Just use your brushes to replicate angles. This is a pretty classic, uh, the, 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 the angle that I'm doing of the room is pretty, pretty typical. Uh, I paint a lot of large rectangles. That is to say, I paint inside a lot of squares when I'm doing weddings. This is at least more interesting than many Is there a squares. tactic to transfer the angles to the canvas? Someone, someone is asking, is there a tactic to transfer yeah. the angles to the canvas? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. You just hold your brush up, you know, close an eye, and then keep it. And it's a physical, it's your hand that keeps the angle. It's your physical hand. You don't let it go like this, you don't let your fingers turn. So you match the angle and you go like this. And it's your hand that kept it that way. You didn't let your hand do anything like this. That absolutely is the trick. Um, so as I was saying, the, uh, standing in a, let me get behind the camera for a second, if you have to paint a room, uh, that's a bad composition, that's not too bad, but that's the best composition. Do you see, because I put the, the dark corner of the room, it's dark in this photograph, at the two-thirds point in the composition. So that is what I'm doing here. Pretty standard trick, I think. Not just for me, but for artists. One of the things, of course, you want to watch out for with a, a painting of a room full of people, as always, is where is the horizon? Um, if I'm standing there, and most of the other people in the room are standing up, which they will be. This will be a stand, this will be a painting of the bride and groom's first dance and, and other members of the family perhaps standing around. Um, 
then all of our heads will be at the same level. And I don't want their heads here, right in the center of the cameras. Do you see that? So I want, I'm going to put their heads here. This is going to be a slightly, again, let me turn you around. It's going to be a horizon low composition. In other words, more like this than like that. That's horizon high, and that's not bad. Nice reflection on the floor. But I think horizon low is better because we get that interesting ceiling. I'm not getting that much of it in the painting, but I'm getting just a little bit. So of course the lines that I'm doing right now are very preliminary. And no, this does not qualify as blobbing in a painting. Some of you have heard my little speech, my lecture on why I prefer blobbing. Painting. The, the first blue that I did was definitely blocking, but now I'm drawing. And uh, it's sort of a compromise to my much prefer to blob in a painting. But when you don't have time for the first blob to dry, for that blue stuff to dry, in this case, and I don't have time for that, but I have to, in order not to waste time, I have to proceed to drawing. Quite a bit of information. And of course, it helps a lot if you're a good drawer. <laughs> That's another statement. It helps a lot if you're a good drawer. That's almost silly. Uh, everything helps a lot if you're a good drawer. If you're if you're an artist, if you're an artist and you have to be a good drawer, that's a good thing. <laughs> Talk about another statement. Um, because the lines that I'm making right now, uh, I'm really, I really am putting quite a bit of weight on them, aren't I? I'm really hoping and assuming that they're correct. And, and by the way, they're not always correct. But uh, if I take my time, <coughs> don't get a big, big rush. Usually they're close enough. Uh, one, other, one other point to make here. Why am I painting in blue? Why am I starting this view in blue? Well, first of all, the view that I'm painting is going to take place in about, uh, it's going to start in about an hour and a half or two hours from now. So, okay, two hours from now, it will be, the outside light will be way into twilight. It won't look like this at all. It'll be a dark twilight blue coming through those windows. So that's why I've chosen to start with blue, but here's the funny part, and I gave this considerable thought. Uh, this painting, I think, is going to be primarily a warm painting. So the irony here is this is a warm painting that I'm starting with a blue underpainting. Kind of unusual, kind of counterintuitive. Um, but that is definitely the way I think this is going. Why am I starting in blue? Um, I'm trying to put intuition, intuitive realities into language. Um, every painting, it's all about the light. The most important aspect of a painting is the play of light, of course. You know that. Um, Let me, let me start describing my thinking this way. Um, it is difficult to control painting, to create a good painting, with two distinct light sources. What would that be? Very simple, very, very, very simple. Hard to do a painting in which there's outdoor natural light is a, is a major element, and indoor artificial light is also an element, okay? It's difficult to wrestle, wrestle that animal into submission. Um, and I'm very aware of that. So I need to be careful in this painting that I don't have a, a, a 
conflicts going on between the warm indoor lighting, which would be lights up here, and then a whole constellation of candles down here. Okay? I can't have a conflict between outdoor light and indoor light. One has to be dominant. That's what I mean, you can't have a conflict. It can't be a close fight. It can't be, you know, a technical knockout in the 15th round. Which one is predominant? No, one of them has to be clearly predominant. And I'm telling you already, it is going to be the warm indoor light that is going to be predominant in this painting. So, <laughs> and so why am I starting with the subdominant lighting? Um, that's a really good question. Again, I'm trying to put in, intuitive stuff into language. Um, I think it's because, here it is. I, okay, it's because I want to, in a sense, I want to sense be, in a sense, be done with the secondary lighting early, early, early in the process. I want to kind of slap it down. It's going to be dim. It's going to be dark blue. It's not going to be like this at all. It's not going to be, again, it's not going to look like this. Does that make sense? It's going to be two and a half, three hours from now when it's twilight outside and it'll be a dim evening blue coming through those windows. And so I think by starting with the dim evening blue, I'm sort of playing a psychological game with myself. I'm saying, okay, let's, let's get this secondary light uh, in place, uh, but done with, out of the way, so to speak. So I don't have to mess with it. Then the rest of my painting, I can concentrate and focus on the predominant lighting in this painting, which will be the indoor warm incandescent and candle lights. Whew, that was a long answer. <laughs> uh, sort of a hard question to answer. If the main light in this in this painting is going to be warm indoor lighting, why am I starting with the cool outdoor lighting? And there's I just give you the answer the best way is because I wanna I wanna be done with it. I want to say, okay, there, blah, blah, blah. That's enough of that. Now, let's get on to the business, okay? And you can say, you could say it's because I've done hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of paintings that have this conflict and potential conflict. And I, of course, screwed up dozens of times. That's how come I know this, this reality. The reality is that you can't have a conflict between two major sources of lighting. One has to be dominant and other subdominant. It doesn't work to have them close, 50-50 competing with each other. Okay? Enough of that. Again, that was a very long answer. <laughs> maybe nobody maybe nobody was wondering the answer to that. But there, I gave it to you anyway. Um, just a few other things with this with this dark stuff. Uh, that's not a good position. I mean, there's a tree here and I'm in the in the, the florists have built built a tree here, but I'm moving it over. I started to paint it in where it is, but then realized that was a mistake. So I'm moving it over. I think the tree is a significant part of the scene. And yes, there's another tree down here. I want to capture, of course, the essence of the evening. I want to capture what the, what the light looks like, generally. Okay, that's a really good place for me to stop. I need to wait for this to dry before I go to my next layer, at which time I will blob in <laughs> some warm colors. Thanks for watching, hope that's helpful. If you like it, submit, uh, <laughs> submit. <laughs> if you like this, submit. <laughs> How about, <laughs> How about um, <laughs> hit the subscribe button? How about that? And uh, share it with your friends if you're an artist. Thanks so much. I'll be back again in a little while.